each of you for coming out on a non-sunshiny day. Uh, it's about 60 degrees. That's the kind of day and when it's raining and overcast where you just really would like to pull the covers over your head and catch 40 more. And, uh, you know, some of you are probably really tired. You had a busy week, hopefully a successful week. Uh, we're going to get back into uh, Joseph, uh, and it's still under the heading of family dynamics, but I also want to tie in some things that occurred the last uh, couple of weeks for myself. Uh, and it's all in, uh, see, this, this thing about Joseph, it's more than just family situations. The economy is bad during this time. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of things have been said and done within the family, within the community, within all creation at that time. Because, like I said, uh, when he had that discourse with his brothers, and he's, he sent them back, and he sent them back to get Benjamin, And they came back, and there was some more discussion. And finally, he, he revealed himself to his brothers after he asked everyone that was not in his bloodline to leave. And there was a reason for that. And uh, the book of Joseph is also about respecting boundaries. It, it, it's, it's, it's quite eye-opening. It also talks about a transfer of wealth. And that has happened in a lot of our families. And it's very important that a transfer of wealth not just occur vis-a-vis -vis you getting a call from a lawyer or a bank or whatever. But hopefully, along with the transfer came wisdom. Because what happens is, oftentimes, if a transfer is made and the person has a lack of knowledge, the transfer will end back in the system that's oppressing the very people that have been praying, trying to get from under the oppression. See, this, this thing with Joseph, and, and I know some may tire, but I, it's, it's ripe. It's ripe with answers, with avenues, with mindsets being changed, matured, fine-tuned, with love growing and, and, and respect, righteous respect flowing from heart to heart and breast to breast in a family situation, but also throughout the community. All of that's in this. I'm going to start in, uh, I'm going to start back in 45, 16, and it, and it reads as follows, and I'm reading out of another translation other than King James. The report of this reached Pharaoh's house. J Joseph's brothers have come, and Pharaoh and his servants were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, here is what you're to do. Load up your animals, go to the land of Canaan, take your father and your families, and come back to me. Now, this is from Pharaoh. Pharaoh is giving this, this, this order. In other words, Jacob's 
quality of life is about to improve. And, you know, I know a lot of us have a lot of personal aspirations about things. Uh, and, you know, I, uh, I, I know for myself, uh, oftentimes, you know, when, when, when things happen, you, you, you begin to ask yourself, well, what is it that I want out of life? And, and I, I know for myself, I want a better quality of life. But it just doesn't entail getting more stuff. Because, uh, you know, m most, of us, uh, most of us are at a station in life where w what mostly we want, we have, if, if we're being honest. And, and that's not, we're not flexing. I'm not flexing trying to make a statement like that. But most of the things that you want, by now, you have. And, and, and some of you have even had situations where there were things that you wanted in your earlier years that you didn't have the finances for. When you got them, you no longer maybe wanted that thing. But, you know, we're going we're gonna to stay with this. He says, let, let's, let's, let's read further. He says, uh, take your father and your families and come back to me. I will give you good property in Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now, remember, this is going on in year two of a seven-year famine. And I'm here to say again, you know, when the pandemic happened, a lot of bad stuff happened, but a lot of good stuff happened too. There is, uh, I've, I've forgotten the number, but there's a, a large number of people that are retiring every year out of the baby boomer generation. And, uh, and I get mixed up about the millennials and Gen Z and Gen X. And, but the younger folk, uh, they're now uh, stepping into the workforce. And, and I can remember uh, in times past, I said, and I wasn't, I said it in jest, but I was serious too. I, you know, we need the younger adults to secure profitable businesses or have profitable careers because quite honestly, in a capitalistic system, the younger fund the social security and sometimes the retirement of the older. See, we did for our grandparents and our great-grandparents, and for some of us, maybe even our parents. I have said proudly, and I, I was sharing with one of the brothers, I said, I, I'm, I'm going to stop saying that. I used to say, uh, you know, I'm a capitalist. But I've started doing more. Um, research on communism, socialism, and capitalism. And uh, since I said it while it was streaming, I'm going to say this now while it's streaming. I'm not so sure I want to say I'm a proud capitalist. I've had to function under that system. And it has done me well. I've had some losses, but I've had a lot of wins too. So I'm not trashing capitalism, but there are some aspects about capitalism uh, that I will say, and I'm not getting political, but in order for capitalism to run at its best, we've been sold that it is a win-win system. Well, there's another school of thought that's saying that capitalism is a zero-sum game. 
And the zero-sum game, if you ever hear somebody say zero-sum game, that means somebody's got to win, but somebody's got to lose. And I will say this, capitalism needs poor people to run. I live in America. I'm glad I'm here, so I'm not anti-America. But America is a capitalist nation. What does all of that have to do with Joseph? Everything. Because, see, we are in year two with Joseph of a seven-year famine. Famine represents lack. Moreover, and, he, and then Pharaoh says, moreover, and this is an order, do this. Now listen, this is Pharaoh now. Now, you know, we've had great people play Pharaoh. <laughs> but it was always in a, he was always seen as the bad guy. But listen, to, listen at what this bad guy is saying to Joseph as to what he's to convey to his father and his brothers and their wives and, and everybody, the cat, the dog, and everybody. He says, and again, I'm not, uh, I'm not elevating Pharaoh because Pharaoh is uh, an agent of the Most High. See, everything in creation is subject to how he molds, moves, and wills. <laughs> Even when they're doing something we would deem as bad. What did he say? I'm God. I create, create good and I create evil. We don't hear that much. We don't hear that much because when, you, when that's said, now you're going against the system. But Torah talks about that. Stay with me. Moreover, and this is an order, do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt to carry your little ones and your wives and bring your father and come. Don't worry about your stuff because everything good in the land of Egypt is yours. Oh, mean Pharaoh. Oh, high-minded Pharaoh. Yeah, he was all of that. But when Yah instructs you what to do, like, like, like even when you know, you're at the beach and the water come up so far, who do you think stopped the water from going? The one that created it. You know, and sometimes, folks, we, uh, sometimes we forget that uh, he's not necessarily pleased with us. And so sometimes when hard times come, we forget. Yeah, he loves us. But sometimes he gets annoyed with us. <laughs> okay. Mm, 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 mm. Don't worry about your stuff because everything good in the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel acted accordingly. And Joseph gave them wagons as Pharaoh had ordered. He didn't suggest. Now, Pharaoh didn't suggest. And sometimes when we, we read the commandments and we read the instructions, we take it as if, well, if I feel like it, or if I'm in the mood. You know, because for a lot of us, the things we do, a lot of us, we depend on how we feel about it.
And, and, and you know, uh, if you want to get something accomplished, if you wait until you feel like it, you probably won't start. And sometimes you just got to force yourself to at least get started. When I used to have to write papers and stuff in school, I was like, but Brad, just, just start writing something. And then, you, you know, you're writing something, and it's, it's in line with the subject matter, but then you go, well, that's not structured right, but you could say this differently this way. And before you know it, you got something decent. Of course, the professor might give you a C, but you know it's A work. But in life, you know, a, a lot of times we're, we're We're so emotional sometimes, we let that be our impetus. And I've said it before, yes, emotions are good and they're needful when they're used correctly. Yeah, there's a time to get angry. Somebody breaking your house, you know, that, that, that's, that's not the time to, you know, well, Fellas, y'all know how I feel about that, you know. That ain't the time to ask, honey, what are we going to do? Don't, don't be that kind of, don't be that kind of spouse, please. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Mm. The sons of Israel acted accordingly, and Yosef gave them wagons, as Pharaoh had ordered, and gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them, he gave a set of new clothes, but to Benjamin, he gave seven and a half pounds of silver and five sets of new clothes. That's what Joseph did. See, Joseph was extra kind to his replacement. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, Barry, you know, why are you, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade on Joseph. I'm, I'm looking at Joseph as if he was just a, a human being, not this uh, religious story superhero, and we think Christian. Joseph had the same emotions that we have. He was his father's favorite. That's kind of what got him a little bit in trouble with his brothers. When he got sold into slavery or put down in the ditch and put in jail, all of those things he remembered. And that's why he said, he said listen, well, Hey, where's, where's the youngest one? Where, where, you got another brother? Yeah, we got one. I want to see him. And then you remember earlier, he put, uh, he did some things. He was kind of messing with his brothers, and brothers do that from time to time. But he gave him seven, seven and a half pounds of silver and five sets of new clothes. Likewise, to his father, he sent ten donkeys loaded with the finest goods Egypt produced, as well as ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, food for his father to eat on the return journey. Life got good. Now, a few chapters earlier, his father was like, wait a minute, I done lost one son. Now this man is asking for Benjamin. And I would imagine, he said, well, oh, father, how much can I take? And he wasn't being disrespectful. He loved Joseph. And he loved Benjamin, but after all of that, he went, all of that he went through in his mind, his heart and his mind. I like what uh, uh, 
Elder Clark, Deacon Clark. I like what Kevin said. Sometimes, you know, I have a, I have a bout where I'm just in humanity. See, that's real. You think the Most High don't know that we are but sometimes flesh and blood? Yes. So us saying or even proclaiming all the time, oh, Lord, as I love us, thou forever and ever, but my life's going to be cut off. That don't shake him. I don't mean he doesn't care. Yeah, he cares. But we can be real with him. But after contemplating all that, he said, okay, nevertheless, okay. He, he borrowed Job's old line. The Lord give him, the Lord take him away. Okay, Benjamin, you go with him. Mm. Thus he sent his brothers on their way, and they left, and he said to them, now this is key. Most of us will read this and not think anything of it, but I want to I expound on this just a second. He said, he sent his brothers on their way, and they left. He said to them, don't quarrel among yourselves while you're traveling. You know why he said that? Because he knew he had just told them, revealed a whole lot of stuff to them. He knew they was feeling bad about how they done him. See, that brings the humanity back into the situation. Sometimes, folks, we as church people, we read stuff and we always think People were like, they had angel wings on their back and they, they didn't live real life. You don't think Moses had to have a conversation with his wife on occasion? I bet he did. Think about Abraham. Pick one, pick somebody. You know, we... We got to stop thinking they were like superheroes. They were people. Real, real people with real family situations. And still, they stayed with the Most High. Don't quarrel among yourselves while you're traveling. He, he remembered how his brothers were. And we, we know how we are. Man. Oh, man, can you believe he did all that? Yeah, man, and I talked so bad about that brother. When you're in your little group, just judging everything. Oh, I wish he would do this, or I wish she would do that, or wish he would, wouldn't do this, or I wish she wouldn't do that. And then the person turn around and do something, and it's like, oh, my God. You know, and sometimes you think about, maybe you didn't say it, because that's another thing we do as church people. I'm not going to say anything bad about anybody, but we think a lot of stuff that's not right sometimes. And you remember... Yah knows our very thoughts. So maybe you didn't. Oh, I wish they'd take that ugly sweat off, you know. You didn't say it. Or, oh, he think he cute, but you didn't say it verbally, but you thought it. Or, I wish he'd move on and getting on my nerves. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but I want you to know, I love you. <laughs> Don't quarrel among yourselves. And then it says, so they went up out of Egypt, entered the land of Canaan, and came to Jacob their father. 
they told him, Joseph is alive. He is ruler over the whole land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe them. So they reported to him everything Joseph had said to them. There they go again. Now remember I told you sometimes we talk too much. Now I'm not saying they, they were so excited because he was like, yeah, Dad, we not lying to you like we did before when we told you that the lions tore him apart. See, see how even sometimes when good things happen, you start remembering some of the crud you did. And so sometimes when we do cruddy stuff, we know, oh my goodness, something coming. Well, I, I, I'll speak for myself because y'all might not do that. Sometimes I go, oh Lord, I, I don't know when it's coming, but it's, it's coming. But see, the, the, but you know, and even in that, I, I can remember as a young child when I would do something and I knew it was bad, I always felt that the punishment was excessive. I always thought that. I was like, what can I leave? You know, I mean, but I, I did. I always thought that. And, you know, you know, some of us may be that way. But, well, well, Father, all I did was, you know, well, it didn't call for all of that. I, I, I tell you, I've shared this with you before. My father stopped me from stealing. Because I, 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 I didn't need much encouragement, but, you know, I, I used to have a little change in my pocket. But the guys I was hanging out with, no, no. The guys I willfully was hanging out with, they were all in the neighborhood. And we would go to this store that some nice Ashkenazis used to own. And remember them now and laters? Well, you used to could reach down in the thing and, you know, walk over to the counter and pay it. So what would Barry do? Barry would reach down in the counter thing, pick it up, walk around the store, put it in his pocket. Had money in his pocket. I had money in a, back then. I think it was like ten cents, maybe, uh, uh, something like that. Uh, but all kind of candy bars. Well, and her name was Miss White. What they did, and I don't know how they they got in contact with our parents. They didn't call the police because they they knew. They, they, knew, they knew where we lived. They knew, oh, and your pastor, he said, which hand did you take it with? <laughs> From now, whenever I get in trouble, give my left hand, because I'm right-handed. But I stuck out my right hand, and I mean with precision. He took his belt off. I think he gave me three. And I mean the same spot. And you know, the first one hurt, but that second one hurt worse, and the last one really hurt because he hit in the same spot. And I, and I stopped stealing. I didn't steal no more. Now, I don't know what the other guys got, but they, they, they contacted all their parents. And you know, and really, they could have called the cops. But they didn't, because they were like, well, you know, they neighborhood kids. And now, had I, you know, that was out in Glen Allen. I can only imagine what would have happened if I had still been living somewhere else. And I ain't gonna say that because I, you know, some people live there, and I ain't trying to start no fight. Um, but I was glad we moved out to Glen Allen. I was at the time, but I had no business stealing. You know, and I thought that was excessive, but it's what I needed to help take that bad chapter out of my life. I didn't steal no more. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. He 
was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe him. So they reported to him everything Joseph had said to them, but it was only when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him that the spirit of Jacob, their father, began to revive. Israel said, enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I must go and see him before I die. Now, I wonder in all their telling, did they ever tell him, and Dad, we got a confession to make. We the ones put him down in that pit. I know we told you. I don't know. Did they? Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But it says here that eventually he was like, okay, I done heard enough. I done heard enough. After he saw them wagons, he said, oh, he sent all that for me? Yeah. See, these are the things that are going on. See, sometimes in, when you're having a moment with your folks, sometimes, because, uh, uh, again, I'll just stick with myself because you all probably were model citizens coming up. Uh, sometimes when you're having a moment with your folks, sometimes you, you get a little too truthful. Now, some stuff you've done, you mean you're going to take that to your grave. But sometimes in a moment when you're having a real moment with them and you feel like you really, man, you know, you really appreciate them and stuff, sometimes you tell on yourself about some stuff. The stuff that, that won't upset them too much. Because I, I can remember, <laughs> Sherry, my mother always encouraged her, you know, I don't, I don't care how <laughs> tough it is, you can talk to me. Sherry took that to heart. She took that to heart so much, my mother used to say, Sherry, Sherry Lynn, don't tell me no more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's good, folks, uh, family is key. Be it good, be it bad, be it whatever. Family is key. Let me read on. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And then it says, enough, my son Joseph is alive. I must go and see him before I die. Israel took everything he owned with him on his journey. He arrived at Bathsheba and offered sacrifices to Yah after his father, Yitzhak, Isaac. In a vision at night, Yah called Israel. Yaakov, Yaakov, he answered. And he said, here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your fathers. Don't be afraid to go down to Egypt. It is there that I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down with you to Egypt, but I will also bring you back here again after Joseph has closed your eyes. See, <clears throat> sometimes things happen in our lives, and uh, you might be thinking, oh, this is this is it. This is this is the end. I had a situation uh, uh, My, uh, my goddaughter had fallen, and uh, there was internal bleeding. Uh, and uh, they got her to the hospital. Uh, her mother had texted me, and I've got to do better, and, and, and I will, because I just felt horrible. Uh, I didn't see the text till a couple of days later. I'm gonna do better. I I, I have to do better. Uh, because I, you know, I kept, hey, if y'all need something, call me. But see, I did. I'm not making any excuse, but I specifically told them, I said, call me. Please, call me. Because I knew I don't, I mean, 
that thing ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, man, I don't feel like reading all that stuff. But I'm, I'm, I'm doing it now. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing it now. But long story short, she got there and uh, got the MCV. And uh, uh, last, I think it was last week, uh, they're, they're running tests and everything, and uh, they couldn't, they couldn't do an operation because they thought it might kill her. And unfortunately, sometimes you know, you get doctors are very knowledgeable, but sometimes their bedside manner is not the best, and. She had a horrible uh, experience or exchange with one of the doctors and things of this nature. But you know they got everything stabilized, and uh, she was in intensive care. And so I went to went to see her, and uh, I, I took her mother up there too. But her her father and his wife they were coming later. So I figured I said, well, let me I ride you up there. Then her brother-in-law was going to uh, come and pick up uh, her mother. Because I had to, I think I had to go do a building. But be that as it may, that gave me an opportunity to talk with her. And uh, she would always kid, uh, you know, she would, Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, your uncle or whatever, godparent or something, you, sometimes you think that kids just remember, uh, you know, the good, you know, most kids think, well, if my folks are mad at me, I can talk to my uncle or I can talk to my godfather or whatever. Um, so that's kind of how um, I, I just kind of made it easy, you know, because I'm like, hey, well, you, whatever you want to do, let's let's do that. I mean, within reason, of course, folks. But she she uh, told her mother to ask me to come up there, and I was like, okay. And so I brought a book because I. I I, Pop used to do that all the time. Whenever he goes somewhere, it used to get on my mother's nerves sometimes. Like, Joseph Lee them books at home, <laughs> which he should have, but you know him, you know. <laughs> he go, so I had a book with me because I didn't know whether they was gonna let me in or not. But I got there and um, she, she was she was in there and I had the book and her mom went in too and so. Her mom makes a joke. This is going to be interesting because you guys, we usually have those, hey, how you doing, da 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 Okay. Homegirl was loaded for bear. And so I was like, well, yeah, well, well you know, what do you want to see me about? And she started asking me some very, very, <laughs> personal questions. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I answered them, but I was like, what? You know, I'm thinking to myself, where, did, where is this coming from? Uh, you know, a few days ago, she thought she was leaving here, you know. And uh, she said, uh, and uh, Mr. Green, She said, um, why? What did she ask? She said, um, why are you always in and out and in and out? And I said, what are you talking about? She says, well, I remember when you took me and my sisters and my mom, you took us shopping. And I was like, yeah, but you were, she was a little thing, you know. Um, and she started pouring out all of this stuff. I mean, stuff that I, I, I wasn't ready for that. She almost made me cry. 
But you know, I, I'm like, oh, you know, no, oh, we can't have this. We can't have this. And then she said to me, um, and I didn't, I didn't, I kind of got touched on the way home. She said, listen, um, uh, my father and his wife will be in soon. And, uh, and I, I mean, I, I, I met her father. Um, and I'm sure he's married to a nice church-going lady because when she come to visit, they have church service in the room. And um, I don't do so well around those kind of people. So um, I, I was there almost not, I was there over two hours, but less than three hours. But she, uh, I, I was amazed at the things that she remembered because I had forgotten a lot of it. But, but I'm, sh I'm sharing that because, see, sometimes, folks, we don't know how we unpack people's lives. And, you know, when I'm standing up here and I'm telling you, and I said in 23, I said, listen, get your house in order because you don't know who's going to need you. I meant that. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to hype you up. And we got on the subject of uh, the, the relationship with her father's not, not the best. But I, uh, and see, I'm, I'm big on boundaries. And so I really didn't want to discuss uh, that, that with her. I, I, said, I said to her, I said, listen, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to get ready to go. I said, but we can talk about that and anything else uh, when I come to see you at home. Because she had to, you know, they had to build her, get her strength built back up. Well, the good news is she's back at home now. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go over that. But this time, I'm going over that. I'm going to be loaded for bad because there are two situations that I want to talk to her about. And all of that's still in here, too. I ain't forgot. When she was a senior in high school, I pulled some strings. Well, I was trying to play matchmaker. I got a godson in uh, Houston, Texas. And I knew. Uh, he looked better than anything in her little high school. And he was down here at uh, Fort Lee. He was a Marine. I brought him here to the church. And uh, I said, well, you know, I, you know, you, you really, uh, he really wanted to go to the promenade. So I told my mother, I said, well, look, let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can work something out. And I brought him over there and introduced him and all, and she never showed. I didn't get mad. Well, I did. I got mad because I normally don't get involved in those kind of things. But I'm telling you, they would have set that place ablaze. All them love. That school ain't had nothing look like that, boy. I mean, of course now, you know, he's married and got a family and all. And I want to talk to her about that. And then later on, uh, as her career got started, because uh, I met some of the guys that she was seeing, and they were, they were nice guys. Uh, but I, you know, I told her mother, I was like, no, 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 not for her. Uh, she needed somebody with a little more polish because she's a, a, a very polished individual. She get that from me. She's a really nice dresser. <laughs> and uh, there was a young man 
I ain't going to tell it all because she'll shoot me if she ever see the song thing. But uh, <laughs> they work together. And you know, that's, that's a bad, bad policy. But uh, that, that worked out. But I'm, 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 I'm looking for the most high to do what he do. I, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm anticipating some stuff, but I, I, I know that he don't need me sticking my nose in her business to that degree. He's going to handle that. But I, I'm, I'm hopeful that even in her recovery, that everything will come full circle for her. Because she's a young, she, she might be. She, I'm thinking she's between, um, you know, I know you're not supposed to guess women's age. That's a no-no. I'm saying she's between 30 and 35 and maybe 40 or so. But I, I when you are conversing with somebody that, is thinking they're not going to be here. It's amazing how frank people will get. And it's equally amazing as to how honest it is, I mean, how easy it is to be honest with people and tell them, if you don't know, say I don't know. And I'm sharing all of this because even in this, family dynamics are still going on. There's some things that uh, I won't encroach upon. And I'm not putting myself up as the standard. I'm just saying in all of what we do, even in helping people, even in ministering to people, even in respect boundaries, respect boundaries, even in this thing, Joseph, by him telling his brothers, don't argue among yourselves on your way back because he did not want them blaming one another. Because they were thinking, man, look at that. Man, he set us up. He's, he's, he's going to take care of us. And look at what we did. And then, the, well, you the one who wanted to do it. You, you never liked him. And, you know, you start the blame game. And another thing that the book of Joseph talks about that we need to remember. It's also a story about victimhood. See, because for a while, when the bad stuff was happening to Joseph, he was in, he was in the victim Olympics. And I'm not saying, I, I would have been too, so I'm not saying it like, you know, how dare he? When stuff unpleasant happens, you do feel like a victim. But I'm, I'm trying to encourage you, don't stay there. Because I, I, I'll tell you, the, the danger of that is you stop trying. Let me explain what I mean. Particularly those of the household of faith. Something goes awry, and sometimes it's almost like, well, you know, I'm just going, I'm, I'm leaving this all up to the most high. Yes, in a way you are, but in a way he's told us not to. Because in James, when it talks about not only speaking the teachings and instructions, but doing them, it's in the doing that builds your faith. But also in your lack, if you're only saying the teachings and instructions, you allow victimhood to live. Because yes, because you remembered it, you can repeat it, but then you're saying, but it don't work for me. So this thing in Joseph, remember now, this is just year two. There are five more years of challenge ahead. 
This is 2024 and something's getting ready to happen in November that could unify or further divide people. And on one hand, I think we're, we'll, we'll all be, I, I, I know we'll be glad when the commercials are over. But remember this, and I'm not saying we got five more years of challenges ahead. But there are going to be challenges ahead. But he's well able to bring us through just like he's bringing them through. I'll read a little further. I got eight minutes. And Ridge, I'm going to stay on time. Mm, mm, mm. Israel took everything he owned with him on this journey. And he arrived at Bathsheba and offered sacrifices to Yah, his father, Isaac. In a vision, God basically said, don't be afraid. Go on down. I'll bring you back here again once Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob left his sons and Israel, and they brought their father, the little ones, their wives, wagons. Pharaoh had sent to carry them. They took their cattle, their possessions, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan and arrived in Egypt. Joseph and all his descendants with him, his sons, his grandsons, his daughters, granddaughters, and all his descendants, he brought with him into Egypt. And then they named all the kids and all the sons. And... Uh, Can you imagine the joy of his father laying eyes on his son? With all of what he was doing, and of course, yes, he was older. He was probably a little feeble. Probably was a long, rough journey. But they were glad. And while I said that their quality of life had improved. It had. But remember, saints, there were still five years of challenges left. So, yes, enjoy. But stay on point. I'm not going to bring up any more about the uh, budget and things of that nature. I do have some other stuff that we might uh, get into, but that will be for either uh, a Wednesday night forum or whatever. But... What I'm saying in this is things will get better. Things are getting better. But there are still other challenges that await us. And getting back to this victimhood mentality, Please rid yourself of that. That's not to say the bad things that happened didn't happen. That's not to say that the system has done what it's done. I've got a, a clip. We're not going to watch it today, but I, it's some, that's something else that I think we'll watch uh, on Wednesday night. It's about a doctor in the Army, and he talks about the struggles that he had. Uh, I think he was put out of, I think they, he was put out of residency or whatever. It's amazing. And this is up to date. This isn't something. Uh, and he, he got a chance to give his presentation among the, I guess, the, the top uh, officers in the medical field for the, for the Army, or for the armed forces. It was amazing because he, he was not a victim. Now, what happened to him was real, but the way he handled it and the things that he's doing, 
uh, and he had charts and graphs and he had proof. And when they span the audience, it was quite interesting. What does that have to do with this? It has everything. See, what I'm trying to do is bring what we hear about in the scriptures, and I'm trying to fit it into what's happening now because a lot of, there are a lot of similarities. Kevin and Jamie are back. Wonderful. My goddaughter is doing better. Wonderful. Things are turning around in your lives. Wonderful. And I don't, I don't mean that in a flippant manner. But all of life, all of life, for all of us, has triumphs, has highs, has some lows. But he's with us through them all. That's what I'm trying to convey. And, and you know, not making light of anybody's situation and not making light of mine either. But saints, we have got to divest ourselves of the victim mentality. It's hurting us. It is hurting us. God bless you.